Dr. John Carwell to come forward and introduce Mr. Johnson Lowe, the 2012 Girls School Engineering Valedictorian. Pleasure to introduce to you Johnson Lowe, Grove School of Engineering Valedictorian. Johnson Ho is an outstanding young man who has had a stellar academic career that promises an exceptional future. Let me tell you a little bit about Johnson's achievements while he was here at City College, and there are many of them. Um, it goes without saying that he had a great academic uh, record. I won't even tell you his GPA, but it was up there. Um, he was a member of the Holly Honors College in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, where we are very proud to uh, have him as one of our students. Johnson received numerous academic awards during his stay at City College, most notably the Varian Goldwater Scholarship in 2011. This national award recognizes undergraduate students who demonstrate academic excellence and outstanding potential for careers in scientific research. Johnson's greatest achievements, however, came outside of the classroom. He pursued undergraduate research right from the uh, get-go as a freshman. Um, he worked in the laboratory of a biomedical engineering professor, uh, Marone Bixen. He was involved in the design of a new electrotherapy technology for non-invasive electro-stimulation. Uh, this work has been published, it's been patented, and is actually being used in uh, several major clinical centers around the United States at this time. Uh, this is an achievement that Dr. Dixon described as simply exceptional, and I agree with him. With three siblings and two immigrant parents, all devoted to serving the immigrant community of Flushing, New York, Johnson has lived most of his life among immigrant populations. Consequently, he too shares his parents' vision of providing opportunities for continuing generations of new Americans. To this end, Johnson spent recent summers developing a therapy treatment plan for depressed patients at the Charles B. Wang Community Health Center in Flushing and teaching English abroad in Taiwan and in China. This summer, he will be at the National Taiwan University College of Medicine pursuing neuroscience research on the uh, neurodevelopment, neurodevelopmental disorders. On campus, he has been involved with the Office of Student Research and Scholarship, the uh, City College Honors Mentoring Program, and the Inter-Varsity Christian Fellowship. Um, in his spare time, and I understand there was some, uh, Johnson also is a certified EMT and crew chief of the volunteer emergency squad on campus, an avid varsity volleyball and track athlete, and founder of the Athletes in Action chapter on campus that helps develop student leadership. He is fluent in Mandarin Chinese, and I understand that for relaxation this last semester, he was studying uh, a class in Brazilian Portuguese. Um, this fall, he plans to pursue a uh, combined MD, PhD degree in neural and, and, and neural and behavioral science. And so, without taking any more of his time, uh, let me present to you a young man who has made the most of his City College experience, your 2012 valedictorian, Johnson Ho. This is it. <laughs> We've arrived. In a sense, at the very pinnacle of that famous steel roller coaster, many of us grew up knowing as Nitro. For years, we've been chugging away, slowly and progressively, up that introductory slope, eagerly anticipating for this very moment to finally arrive. And now we're here, at the moment of weightlessness. Too much dirty feet high, and looking forward to the impending 215 feet drop, where all the potential energy we've built up finally converts into... Okay. Kinetic energy, that's right. <laughs> we can just begin to see the upcoming camera and U-turns and S-curves and healing instructions up ahead, 
when Bruch will immediately thrust forward into the drop. Achieving a max G force of 4.2 and speed of just 80 miles per hour within seconds. Not too bad. The whole ride only lasts for 2 minutes and 20 seconds. A moment in which the majority was spent seemingly in those early preparatory stages traveling up that slope. 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And suddenly, it's over. The ride is finished. It's time to get up and off and onto the next ride. What were the lessons learned along the way? And what was the legacy we have left? Or will we be today? As is the case for many of us, I too come from a humble background of modest means. Back in Taiwan, my parents, who are sitting right here, originally worked uh, one as a manager of a top insurance company, and the other one as a professor of fine arts at National Taiwan University, especially University in Taiwan. They were already together then, and my mother came to New York, in a sense, to expand her artistic horizons. While they were separated for a time, both my parents, according to their testimony, gained a certain resolve, as if it was a destiny, to pursue theological studies at church bench. By the time they finished their studies, they both moved to New York. And that's where I came along with one older sister and two younger brothers, who are sitting here today and also showing their support. From early on, I had the good fortune to be able to recognize and embrace my parents' mission, which is to minister to and serve the Asian immigrant population of Southern New York. They have sacrificed much to pursue this calling, including their personal livelihoods, comforts and finances, and oftentimes, even me to their children. I primarily remember two phases, often repeated growing up. The first was, just try your best. This was especially the case when I was asking for academic help. And the second, a daily prayer that my mom often repeated and testified to the friends that she would meet in church. And she would say, God, as I take care of your children, may you take care of mine. Let's return to City College. The words of Sir Townsend Harris since 1847, when the City College of New York was first founded as the Free Academy of the City of New York. Open the doors to all, that the children of the rich and the poor take their seats together, and know of no distinction, save that of industry, good conduct, and intellect. The school's mission was simple, to create vast new educational opportunities for all peoples of the city of New York. And as you see on the flags that line our streets, the purple ones, to provide access to excellence. This is my legacy, and I am proud to be a part of it. I am proud of my parents for their ministry. I am proud of my siblings for their understanding. I am proud of our professors for your knowledge and wisdom. I am proud of the administrators for the curricular infrastructure. I am proud of our peers for your drive and motivation. I am proud of our campus staff, and the cleaning crew who really should come into our building at 7 o'clock every morning to clean up after us. I'm proud of our alumni who, in the background, continue to stay involved and show their support. I'm proud of you, my graduating class of 2012, for your accomplishments thus far and your future going forward. This may be difficult to believe, but we're actually engineers now. <laughs> the principles of engineering have already been ingrained into our minds. Mindsets and analysis of systems, both big and small. I, I became truly conscious of this first when taking that foundational mechanics and materials course in the Steinman Engineering Building Main Metro Hall. We were drawing free body diagrams and analyzing forces along various themes when I began to notice them. Going down the hallway or walking along the Amsterdam Avenue, I would see lampposts and street signs, and spontaneously, I would start tracking the forces. Even to report a cracking attack to the safety. Very strange. Not that it meant anything significant, but that is when I first became aware of the level of influence that our professors and academia has on our lives. We've gone through the coursework, we've done the research, we've completed senior design. And finally, we're ready for the real world to work at a company, to continue on to graduate studies. I was doing something totally different, at least for a few months. Back there, I just wanted to remind us of two words. Finish well. In each of our many experiences, and we will have many, finish well. In each of our relationships, with our professors, with our peers, finish well. Go forward until our roller coaster makes its final stop. Remember and resolve to finish well.